So we're going to chat today about uh, ketogenic diet. Uh, for you guys on Facebook, uh, have you heard of the uh, ketogenic diet before? Or have you tried the uh, ketogenic diet before? Uh, let me know on Facebook. I'm curious who's heard about it, who's not heard about it, who's, uh, uh, who knows something about it. Because uh, I have, uh, through the years, uh, the ketogenic diet has kind of come up and became popular and at other times not as popular and other diets came and went uh, with that. I'm curious if any of you guys have tried the ketogenic diet or, or what is it, right? What is the ketogenic diet? Have you tried that before, Jose? Do you know what that is, ketogenic? <clears throat> oh, I don't hear you, Jose. Are you muted? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, there, there, you go. there you go. Yeah, what have you heard about um, ketogenic diet? Is it when, like, when you're fasting or you eat like a bunch of fats? Eat a bunch of fats. <laughs> like bacon and stuff. <laughs> Good fats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard that folks who are on this ketogenic diet, um, they eat a lot of fats. Is that what happens, Sherry? You've been doing it for years. What do you eat? Um, intermittent. <laughs> Jeff has not tried it enough. So I've heard that with the ketogenic diet, you um, you avoid carbs, right? You avoid sugar, and and you avoid anything that raises your sugar, and you replace it with like fats. Uh, is what I've heard. Good morning, Cindy. And I've always wondered, I, I had a good number of patients who have tried uh, this diet. So it's like a, a fat, it's a high fat, no sugar type diet, ketogenic diet. Uh, my question is, what is, the, what is the purpose of being on a high fat, no sugar diet? Sherry, do you know the purpose of it or Jeff? Or Cindy, do you guys know the purpose of a high fat, no sugar or low sugar diet? I mean, what is the end goal? Right? And Barbara says, Flav City with Bobby Parrish on Facebook. Good morning, Nancy from Pennsylvania. Uh, Sherry says, eggs, pickles, olives, green seafood. Is that ketogenic? Eggs, pickles, olive, greens, and seafood? <laughs> Why do people go on the ketogenic diet? Is it to, uh, to lose weight? Is it for health reasons? Is it to treat any specific conditions, guys? Why do you go on the ketogenic diet? More energy, huh? Cindy says more energy. Um, does it give you more energy, Cindy? Have you tried it? Do you know why it gives you more energy? Is it because of the, the ketones that are produced? Uh, weight management? I got to figure out how to bring some folks here like live with us so they can uh, chat. Um, Nancy said, I traveled. Don't judge. <laughs> the... Jeff says he's only heard in the context of weight loss. Does memorial care teach us the ketogenic diet? Ketones. So is uh, keto yeah, yeah, like today. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Like today, right? Flax is something my mom does every day. Uh, Nancy, yes. So, so our bodies can either use. Our bodies can either use for energy sugar, right? Um, sugar is the primary source of energy for our bodies. And as you know, uh, in America, we don't have a lack of sugar, right? We don't have a lack of sugar. Uh, everything we eat in the American diet is, uh, raises our sugar, whether it's desserts and snacks and cookies and ice cream or... In the American diet, we are a carb-based diet. So we are into 
you know, what are some carbs that you eat, Jose, in the American diet? It's like Ooh, bread, a lot of bread. We do we do a lot bread, of bread. Pastas. We do pasta, yeah. Bread, pasta. What else? Um, what do you eat? <laughs> we do a lot of. Uh, a lot of pizza. A lot of pizzas. Yes, that's the American diet. Hamburgers, uh, hot dogs. It's all carbs, right? It's the buns uh, on there. It's. Uh, it's the rice, uh, lots of rice. Um, the Hispanic culture, do they do a lot of uh, carbohydrate? A lot of tortillas. Okay. Is tortilla kind of like the what Asians uh, do? Like we eat a lot of rice. So in the Hispanic culture, do you eat more tortillas? Much. Okay. So again, that's all carbs, right? All carb based and yeah, tortillas and beans. That's our, our tortilla and our, beans. Our, our <laughs> okay, we're like rice and uh, and rice. <laughs> uh, Ken Lewis says donuts, love it, all the good stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cindy says Les Mills instructor says ketone is good for the brain. Uh, brain cells require carbs for function. So good morning, Gustav. Gustav here, who's online, has uh, is a chef and makes really good, delicious breakfast that's completely healthy at his house. Uh, <clears throat> Sherry says, I did a diet called the vicious cycle to clean up my body and wound up staying on it, which turned out to be a blend of keto. Okay. Yeah, noodles is something we we do a lot in um, in our community, and especially the Asian community, ramen and all those different things. So, so a lot of our diet, guys, is um, is carbohydrate. And when you do carbohydrate, what happens to our sugar levels? Right. Every time we do breads, rice, tortillas, pasta, noodle, uh, which is essentially the American diet, right? Pizza. Uh, the sugar goes up, and and we know that our body does use sugar for energy. Our body does use sugar for energy. The problem is we often have more sugar than we actually burn. We have more sugar than we need, and when we have more sugar than we need, uh, that sugar gets stored uh, somewhere. Uh, it's called excess energy, right? Do you guys know where sugar gets stored uh, with that? Do you guys know where sugar gets stored? Ken is down 35 pounds while doing the 18-6 uh, the intermittent fasting diet. His hemoglobin A1C is down to 5.4, which is now in the normal range. Congratulations, Ken. Ken, I would love to bring you online sometime with us on one of these uh, Facebook Zoom talks so you can share your experience with uh, everyone else here. Uh, so, so the sugar goes up, sugar spikes, and, and all this extra sugar gets stored. Uh, Barbara says uh, inflammation, yes. And so the sugar gets stored in three different locations, three different locations when there's too much sugar which is uh which is what all of us have right too much sugar or too much carbs that breaks down the sugar the first location that sugar goes to guys is that it goes to our liver it goes to our liver and what it deposits in your liver it causes a condition that's called fatty liver fatty liver how many of you guys have heard of fatty liver Right? Have you ever fatty liver, Jose? It's um, it's a. I've heard of it. Yeah. Do you know what it does or what it is? It 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 just means too much fat in your liver. <laughs> too much fat in your liver. <laughs> yeah. But why is that bad? Right. The, the question is why is that bad? It's bad because when you have too much fat in your liver in the in the form of glycogen, right? It deposits in the form of glycogen. 
it causes your liver to be inflamed. Uh, we call that hepatitis. And when your liver gets inflamed, it does not function appropriately. It doesn't filter out the toxins that it should be filtering out. And so when there's too much fat in your liver and it gets inflamed, uh, it, is one, it is becoming one of the leading reasons, guys. Fatty liver is becoming one of the leading reasons for cirrhosis. And, uh, and cirrhosis untreated leads to liver transplants. Uh, so believe it or not, um, one of the leading reasons for liver transplants today and uh, is going to become it's going to be caused by fatty liver and fatty liver simply means too much sugar in our liver uh, too much sugar leads to a fatty deposits in the form of glycogen which leads to hepatitis untreated becomes cirrhosis which is scarring of your liver and untreated cirrhosis leads to liver transplants um, and it boils down to simply too much sugar that deposits in your liver uh, pretty crazy when you think about it, right? Because quite frankly, it's something reversible if caught early, right? You can reverse the fatty deposit in your liver if, uh, if caught early enough to, uh, to prevent damage. So, so that's the number one location. That's the first location where uh, too much sugar is deposited in. Does anyone know the second location? Hello, Pastor G is here. One of our pastors is here online. Does anyone know the second location where too much sugar goes to? First location is liver. Where is the second location? Any thoughts, Jose, on that? <laughs> where does the second second location? Any of you guys on Your Facebook? Gut? <laughs> No, your, your gut processes it, right? Your gut processes the, the sugar, and it goes into your bloodstream. So from the bloodstream, where, where does it go to? It goes to the liver as number one. Where does the second place? What type of cells, Sherry's? What type of cells? It goes to your liver cell, number one. What is number two? What kind of cells does it go to besides uh, the liver cells to deposit? Right? Any thoughts on it, guys? And so, so too much sugar first goes to the liver. Too much sugar goes secondly to your fat cells, to your fat cells. And so the, the sugar deposits in our fat cells and makes us fat. Not the heart, but good guess, right? Too much sugar goes into our fat cells and makes us fat. Did you know in uh, Nancy, it does go to your brain, um, but it doesn't necessarily deposit in your brain. It goes to your brain, but doesn't necessarily deposit in your brain. The brain does use sugar for energy. So too much sugar goes to our fat cells and makes us obese. Did you know that in, in the United States, in America, I don't know about Canada or Mexico or other locations, but in America, in the U.S., two out of three folks in the U.S. are overweight, right? Two out of three of us have more weight than we should. And, and that's calculated by the, uh, the BMI index, uh, body mass uh, index. Uh, with that and so so at so two out of three of us have a BMI that's higher than it should be and and forever we have been taught forever we have been taught that if we want to lose weight right if we want to lose weight if we're, if we're obese or if we're fat and we want to lose fat the diet to be on is a low fat diet right we've always been trained forever that if you want to lose fat if you want to lose weight the diet to be on is a low fat diet but the truth is this 
it, everyone is on a low-fat diet, and I can tell you that most of us are pretty conscientious about cutting fat out in, the, in our diet. So, for example, if you're eating a steak, right? If you're eating a, a steak, and around the steak is a is a, a rim of fat, what do we normally do to that? Right? We if you got steak, if you got fat around your steak, what do you normally do to that fat? Right? So most of us will trim out the fat, except for maybe Jose and I, right? So most of us will trim out the fat. And, and so we've been trained to cut out the fat. We've been trained to trim out the fat. And if that's the case, and we all cut out or trim out the fat in our steak, why is it? that two out of three Americans are still overweight or in the obese category, right? Oh, Cindy Chen says she'll eat it and Barb will cut it off, <laughs> right? If, if we are all trained to cut out the fat, why is it that two out of three Americans are overweight if we are all conscientious uh, about the fat that's in our diet? The answer is that it's not necessarily the fat that is behind the obesity epidemic in America. Guys, it is the sugar that is behind the obesity epidemic because too much sugar deposits in your fat cells and make you fat. So what I'm really saying is that we have been focused on the wrong diet, right? We have been focused on a low fat diet while, while America gets fatter because America is getting fatter, not from the fat in our diet, but America is getting fatter from the sugar that deposits into our fat cells and makes us obese. Does that make sense so far for you guys? Uh, type in yes if that makes sense for you guys. Uh, I want to make sure that you're all kind of up to date with me, that um, that it is not necessarily the fat. Yes, thank you, Brian. I saw that. It is not necessarily the fat in our diet, but it is the sugar that we are feeding each other through the, the carbohydrate-based diet in America. And, and so sugar is the Trojan horse behind the obesity epidemic right? Carbohydrate is the Trojan horse behind obesity in America, not fat. And, uh, and not that many people are aware of that, right? We're, we're all conscientious about cutting out fat, cutting out fat, cutting out fat. But the truth is, it's really the carbs that we're eating, the, the breads, the pasta, the rice, the potatoes, the spaghetti, the pizza, Right, the American diet is behind obesity, and it is a carbohydrate diet, not a fat diet, not a low-fat diet. And and yes, so that's really the the problem behind uh, why America is getting fatter uh, with that. Cindy says that means boba drink are the ultimate enemy. Cindy. <laughs> You just ruined my day by destroying boba. That's very uh, sad uh, with that. But, uh, but yes, you are correct. <laughs> Sherry, congratulations that you're moving away from processed food uh, with that. So when it comes to ketogenic, right, the reason why people lose weight on the ketogenic diet is that they are cutting out the carbs, right? Is that they are cutting out the carbs in their diet. And when they cut out the carbs in the diet, there's no sugar to go into the fat cells. When there's no sugar to go into the fat cells, then you, get, then you can't get fatter, right? And if your body is using sugar for energy, and you cut out the sugar, 
and you cut out the sugar, right? For, uh, and your body doesn't have sugar for energy. What does the body burn next, guys, for energy? Joanne says, what about cheesecake? Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, Joanne, I think cheese, a slice of cheesecake is about 1,000 calories at Cheesecake Factory. So I apologize, Joanne. It's, uh, you know, you guys ruined it for me by destroying my boba. I'm going to destroy your cheesecake. It's not good for you. Uh, with that, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Joanne. But uh, anything with sugar, right? So if the body doesn't have sugar by cutting out the carbs in your diet, what does the body burn next for energy? Right? Fat. It's burning your fat. It's burning your fat. Yes, it's burning your fat. Uh, yes, Vicky, 100%. So if you want to lose weight. If you want to lose weight, you need to burn fat. If you want to burn fat, you need to have no sugar so that the body will start burning fat. As long as there's sugar, right? As long as there's sugar in your system, the body would use sugar for energy and not fat. So if you want to burn fat, you need to get rid of sugar. When you have no sugar, the body goes to plan B for energy, and plan B is burning fat. Right? Sherry says, uh, I gained 30 pounds after a surgery. Then I did keto and lost 30 pounds in a year. That's right. That's right. So... So guys, very simple. If you want to lose weight, just get rid of the sugar. You will naturally burn fat. So, so don't focus on this low fat diet. Focus on a low sugar diet. Now, does it mean that you can eat all the fat you want? Yes or no? Does it mean that you can eat all the fat you want? Yes or no? What do you think? Right? No. No? Why not, Jose? <laughs> well, I mean, too bad is also bad for you. I mean, too much fat is also bad for you. Um, not unless if you're eating, you know, the good fats, like, you know, that you find in peanuts or salmon or something like that. But if you finish a whole <laughs> pack of bacon, I don't, yeah. I don't think that'll be healthy. <laughs> That's right. I that sucks because I love bacon, <laughs> especially the crispy ones at. Uh, I don't like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crispy. Yeah. I, I like the I like the bacon when it's crispy. You know what I'm talking about? Like you can have bacon that's soggy and you have to like bite it off, you know, tear it off, right. and you have the bacon that just crunches. The crunchy bacon yeah. is the best, right? Where can you get crunchy bacon? I'm not sure. <laughs> I normally ask for it, like, you know, extra crispy. Oh, okay. You just have to ask for it. Extra crispy. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, so, yes, the answer is you cannot eat all the fat you want because it will raise your bad cholesterol. So, so what you need to do is you need to diversify and, and, and separate out good fat versus bad fat. Right? Good fat versus bad fat. Barbara says, can you use monk fruit to replace sugar? Yes, Barbara. You can use plant-based sugar like, uh, like monk fruit or stevia to replace the real sugar. If you wanted some sugar, I would replace it. Um, Kazuko says, are the sweets... In sweet fruit like white peach is also bad so eating sugar from a fruit is always better than processed white sugar okay it's still sugar though but it's a, it's a little bit at least it's more natural than processed white sugar um, so I'm not against eating fruits at all I mean I eat fruits I mean I love like strawberries or 
you know, watermelons and things of that sort uh, with that. Uh, Pastor G says, is there any fruit with low sugar? Yes. Um, a, an apple doesn't have a lot of sugar compared to like, you know, like a strawberry. Um, so yes, there are fruits with low sugar, like apples, maybe some pears, right? Uh, any other fruits with low sugar you can think of, Jose? That's all I can think of right now. Um, I can't think of it. Yeah. That's because our brain's like foggy with sugar, right? Uh, Ken says once you're talking about bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bacon's a great fruit. I love it. Um, <laughs> so Ken says once you are fat adapted, cholesterol's not an issue. Uh, yes, the key, guys, the key is to eat the good fat, not the bad fat, right? You have to separate out. Lisa says I have a flourless chocolate cake with stevia recipe lisa can you post that recipe for all of us here a uh, flourless chocolate cake with stevia wow can you post that recipe lisa i love it or as a matter of fact can you come online with us sometime and tell us the actual recipe or cook it in front of us like a zoom cooking show uh I'm talking to lisa thurman here from the uh, global alzheimer's uh, platform, right? An Alzheimer's expert with flourless chocolate cake recipes. I love it. Uh, Cindy says grapefruit. That's right. Grapefruit is not that sweet, right? It's more like sour. Um, berries is good for information. Uh, kiwi is good. Uh, blackberries, kiwi, low sugar, very good. Lisa is willing to come on uh, and um, and maybe do a demo for us. Okay, Lisa, can you do a demo for us this, is, what day is today, Wednesday or Thursday, Jose? No, Wednesday, today's Tuesday, right? Lisa, can you come on uh, and do a demo for us this Thursday morning at 8 a.m.? Uh, let us know on chat if you can do a demo, cooking, uh, a cooking demo on Zoom this thursday at 8 a.m uh, i'll take i'll bring you on zoom with health talks without the trend a cooking demo of your uh what is it flourless chocolate cake with stevia i'm just i've lost track of uh what the topic is now i'm just thinking about her flourless <laughs> chocolate cake with stevia uh, let us know if you can come on lisa and uh, the audience here will be waiting to know if you can come on Thursday, 8 o'clock live and do a cooking demo. Uh, not this week, but next week. Okay, next Thursday, guys. Not this Thursday, but next Thursday, 8 a.m., Lisa's going to come on Zoom and do a, uh, a demo, a cooking demo of her dish, um, which is uh, apparently keto-friendly. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Cindy says, when I had a trainer and lost 35 pounds, uh, years ago, the trainer asked if you can cut all sugar and only allow half a grapefruit if you crave sweets. Wow, that's mm -hmm. tough. So, guys, back to back to sh fats. I'm not saying to avoid fats. What I'm saying is to do the good fats and avoid the bad fats. The the good fat. What are some good fats, guys? What are some good fats? Um, Avocado is a good fat. Nuts. Nuts is a good fat. What else? Apparently, we don't eat that many good fats to know, huh, Zay? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> guys, tell us, what are some good fats? Right. Good morning, Julie. And so, what are some? So we mentioned avocados and nuts. What are some other good fats besides avocados? Um, fish. Salmon. Fish is a good fat because fish has a omega three fatty acid, right? That's a good fat. That's why the word fatty is in omega, right? So salmon. Ken mentioned salmon. Uh, so fish has good fats. What else has good fats? There's nuts, there's avocado, there's fish. 
there's a uh, uh, coconut has uh, saturated fat. Can coconut has saturated fat, so uh, so I'm a little leery of too much coconut. On the other hand, coconut has uh, what I call uh, MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides oil, that breaks down the ketones for energy. So it's uh, tofu. Tofu is a better source of protein than fat, Lisa. Uh, tofu is more of a protein source than a fat source. An another source of good fat would be uh, seeds, like flaxseed, right? Different types of seeds has uh, good fats. So those are all sources of good fat. Uh, olive oil. Olive oil is good fat. Okay, especially the extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil is part of uh, the Mediterranean diet. And the Mediterranean diet has been shown in clinical trials to be heart healthy and brain healthy as well. Sherry says beer. I'm not sure about beer. Uh, yes, hemp seed. Hemp seed. Uh, Lisa says vegetarian sources, omega-3s. Uh, uh, edamani, edamani uh, beans. Is edamani, where do you eat that? Is that in uh, Japanese restaurants, edamani? Is that one of those little green things that you, like, eat the pea pods out of? Is that yeah. what it is, Jose? Is that yeah. Okay, that's an edamani. Okay. I just thought they were, like, pea pods that they gave you to eat. But they're actually called edamanes, huh? <laughs> so, yes, those are good sources of uh, of good fats. So, so eat the good fats. We all need fat. Our brain is made up of like 60, 70 percent fat. We need fat. There are certain types of vitamins that require fat for absorption. We call them fat soluble uh, vitamins, right? Um, and so, so we need fat. You just have to avoid the bad fat. You just have to avoid the bad fat, which is saturated fat and trans fat, right? Uh, does anyone know where, where saturated fats come from? What are some foods that have saturated fat? Do you know, Zay, what are some foods that have saturated fats? That's obviously the bad fat, right? Yeah. Yeah, what are some bacon? That's bacon. One. <laughs> bacon. Unless you do turkey bacon, then uh it's a little bit better. But that's not real bacon, is it? So it's not the same, no. It's not the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think bacon should be categorized as a fruit. But anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh but maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. So so saturated fat is uh red meat. Red meat, beef, uh, especially has saturated fats. Uh, a lot of trans fat is stuff that's in um, fried foods, right? French fries has saturated fats, uh, a lot of fried foods. And you know, the problem is fried food is part of the American diet, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, pork fat rules. Ken Lewis says pork fat rules. <laughs> Yeah, so those are the bad fats. Uh, so my problem with the ketogenic diet is this, guys. My problem with the ketogenic diet is some people believe that you can eat all the fat you want. And, and they don't distinguish between good fat and bad fat. Right? Have you seen people on the ketogenic diet and they're, they're eating, they're cutting out their sugar, they're cutting out the carbs, but they're like sitting there eating all the bacon they want. Have you seen those kind of ketogenic diet folks? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Atkins diet. Right? Have you heard the Atkins diet? Dr. Atkins says you can eat all the bacon you want. He says you can eat all the steak you want. Right? And and so so that type of ketogenic diet will give you a heart attack. <laughs> so you'll lose weight because you don't have sugar 
but you're but you clog up your you clog up your arteries, right? What did Dr. Atkins die of? I think he had a heart attack or something, some kind of cardiovascular disease, right? And so, so I am against the ketogenic diet if it preaches that you can eat all the fat you want, including the bad fats. So to answer the question, is a ketogenic diet good or bad for you? If the diet preaches that you can eat all the fat you want, it is bad for you. That is, the, that is a bad diet where you can sit there and eat lard and butter and all the bacon you want. Yes, you will lose weight on that diet because you got no sugar, right? You got no sugar to, to feed your fat cells to make you fat. You'll lose weight, but you will clog your arteries from all the fat you want. So I am against that type of ketogenic diet. I am for a diet. I am, I am for a diet that gets you to the state of ketosis. Okay? But you got to get to that state of ketosis by cutting out sugar, cutting out carbs. You can get to that state of ketosis where, where you get the health value of it without eating all the fat you want. Right? You can get to that state through intermittent fasting. When you intermittent fast, you know, and to many people, intermittent fasting has different meanings. Uh, so Ken, Ken Lewis mentioned that uh, he did this 18-6 uh, intermittent fasting plan. What that means is, uh, is you go for about 18 hours without uh, eating. Uh, you can drink water, you can drink coffee, no, you know, you can stay hydrated, but you stay away from sugar. And then you have this six hour window where you're eating uh, is what many people do with that, that uh, intermittent fasting uh, plan. And when you're fasting in that 18 hour time span, your, uh, your sugar level stays low and because you're fasting. And when your sugar level is low, uh, meaning you wake up and for breakfast you have water only and your next meal is lunchtime and things of that sort. Uh, again, I wouldn't necessarily advise that you do this without, you know, letting your doctor know. Uh, because many of you guys are on pills and medications and diabetes pills and all that. I wouldn't want you to fast and have your blood sugar crash if you're on diabetes medications. You got to do it in conjunction with your doctor's uh, approval and to let them know before you change any major dieting plan like intermittent fasting. But if you, for those who do intermittent fast, uh, when you wake in the morning and, and you don't have breakfast and you're drinking water, tea, or coffee without the sugar, your sugar level is low. And when your sugar level is low, your body still needs sugar for energy. It needs an energy source. And because there's no sugar, it burns fat in the morning. So you're always burning fat in the morning until lunchtime. So you get about a few hours of fat burn before lunch. Once you eat lunch, the sugar's back up. So your body starts to burn that sugar, right? But before lunch, when you wake up, you know, it's burning fat for energy. And when it does that, uh, that's where the weight loss comes in. That's where you produce ketones. You get into that state of ketosis, right, from burning fat. The byproduct of fat burn is ketones. So, so you're burning your fat, and it makes ketones. And when you make ketones, the ketones is now used for energy, in lieu of fat, I mean in lieu of sugar, right? Uh, ketones is now used for energy. So that's the ketogenic diet in my mind. It's getting to that state of ketosis. You can do it through intermittent fasting. You don't have to do it by eating all the fat you want. Um, I do recommend that you eat fat, but you have to eat the good fat, not the bad fat. Cowboy coffee. I'm uh, Pastor G. I'm not sure what is cowboy coffee. <clears throat> he asked, does cowboy coffee kill fat? <laughs> I'm not familiar with cowboy coffee. Uh, you can have any coffee you want as long as it doesn't have sugar in it. And if you don't have sugar in it, then 
right? Then you won't ruin the ketosis. You won't ruin the fat burn uh, with that. Um, Lisa says, intermittent fasting has changed my view on food. I enjoy cooking more and make better food choices, all the while burning fat. Yeah, because you're only eating, you know, two times a day. So you're more focused on, on those two meals and, and you eat more healthy. Great point, Lisa. Uh, Twee says, can she add half and half uh, to the morning coffee? As long as it doesn't have sugar, Twee. If it has sugar, it ruins the, uh, the fat burn. If it doesn't have sugar, I'm not so worried. Uh, Ken says, I switched from metformin to uh, glumetza, so I could take meds at night, meaning I didn't have to take just pills. Um, breakfast is coffee or tea with a little stevia. Uh, after the first week, it becomes easy. That's right, Ken. Um, the first week is the hardest, actually, for those who have tried this, because the first week that we are uh, intermittent fasting, we uh, our body doesn't know how to burn fat the first week, uh, because our body has never needed to burn fat. It's always had sugar on board, and and so it's like having a car that hasn't started in a year, right? The car has been sitting there for a year and it's never started. Uh, that's kind of like your body. Uh, trying to burn fat because it doesn't know how it hasn't burned fat for a year because we always have sugar on board because of the American diet and the carbs that we eat so the first week your body doesn't have sugar when you're fasting so it's like it's trying to figure out how to burn the fat it's kind of like that star that that car trying to start and so so if you, the car hasn't started in a year and you're trying to crank it it's just cranking right it doesn't start immediately. It's like crank, 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 crank. And it's trying to learn how to burn fat that first week. And as it's cranking, you get cranky because you get hungry the first week you're trying to do this. And you get like, you know, easily frustrated and you get angry. You get hungry and angry. I call it hangry the first week. Because the I can body can relate to that. You can relate to that, right, Jose? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because the body doesn't know how to burn fat until um, you know, until week two. Week two, the body have adjusted and has learned how to burn fat. It's like that car is now starting. And week two, the hunger goes away because now you have ketones that it's being created for energy. Uh, now, Dr. Trent, do you have a like a, a link or a handout that maybe you can share with with us and and uh, you know foods that you suggest that can help um, our bodies get used to this uh, new way of, of eating and living yeah foods that uh yeah the types of food you should be eating you mean overall or foods that are like in the in the first week you should be eating so it doesn't make it so hard <laughs> for that transition right so, so Lisa says MCT oil in coffee, yes, is a way to, uh, is a way to get through this transition. Uh, it's a way to get into that first week to overcome it. MCT oil is basically uh, an oil you can get from coconut oil. And it breaks, you take the MCT oil, you ingest it, it goes to your liver, and your liver breaks it down immediately into ketones for energy. So you're helping the ketone production while your body is trying to learn how to burn fat. That's the transition period that you can do within that first week. Or you can take ketone supplements. Have you gone to Costco and they sell these ketone supplements? You can take ketone supplements that first week and it helps with you know making those ketones while your body is trying to burn fat uh, to get you over the first week's transition. Uh, with that. All right, Brett says, uh, can explain the difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis? Great question. Great question. Ketosis is a state where your body has ketones being produced. Uh, it is in that state when there's no sugar on board and your body is burning fat to make ketones. Okay. 
that is a uh, state of ketosis. Now, Brian is asking about a condition where diabetics get into this life-threatening condition called uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis. And, and the difference is this, Brian. When you are a diabetic and your sugar is out of control, your sugar is like in the 300s, 400s, it is because your body is either no longer have insulin to bring the sugar into the cells to be used, or your body is insulin resistant, or you're eating bad foods and your sugar is way high. It creates a state of ketoacidosis. Uh, metabolic ketoacidosis from diabetes. That is a life-threatening state. Uh, that is a state where your sugar is too high rather than too low, right? It's, and the state of uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, your sugar is low, so your body burns fat to make ketones. In diabetic ketoacidosis, the sugar is not too low, it's actually too high, and, and that is a life-threatening condition. Uh, that's the difference between uh, getting into ketosis through intermittent fasting and good health versus a out-of-control, poorly controlled diabetes uh, patient that get into ketoacidosis. Uh, so that's the difference. I hope, uh, does that make sense, Brian, uh, with that? So anyway, guys, uh, it's 9.58 already. Holy moly. Uh, so to conclude... To conclude uh, for you guys, ketogenic diet, good or bad? Both, good and bad, depending on the fats you eat. <laughs> it's good and bad, depending on the fats that you eat. If, if you are on that ketogenic diet when you're eating all the fat you want, that is bad. If you can get to the state of ketosis through a plant-based diet and intermittent fasting, that's probably healthier. Uh, Brian says, what is the third sugar storage? Yes, third sh sugar storage, Brian, is uh, going to be saved for next lecture. <laughs> so I can have more time to explain it to you guys uh, with that since we're uh, out of time here. But I will stay explain it to you uh, maybe in the next lecture when uh, we chat again. So guys, we're out of time. Thanks so much. Uh, I hope I answered the question for you guys about the ketogenic diet, good or bad, and, uh, and it all depends on what you eat in that ketogenic diet, right? Um, and intermittent fasting is a better way to get to ketosis, uh, but you can't do it without your doctor's approval, uh, especially if you're on medications and stuff like that. So uh, I will talk to you guys later. Um, and um, today is Tuesday, yeah. Later on at 4 p.m. today, I'm doing a COVID update uh, at 4 p.m. If you're interested in that COVID update at 4 p.m., uh, there is a link to go to. Uh, I, will post, I will post that link on Facebook later for you guys uh, where you got to register uh, and, um, and before you get the Zoom link. And uh, the host for that uh, event is... Uh, is the uh, Elite Financial Network or something like that. It's a, a wealth management group that's hosting this event at 4 p.m. that I'll be speaking to. Um, and Lisa, we will see you next week, next Thursday, chocolate cake uh, demo. Yes, chocolate cake demo. We definitely need that. All right, guys, we're right, uh, at 9 o'clock. Jose, do you want to say anything about Memorial Care? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you know, thank you so much for everything that you do, Dr. Trin. Uh, it, it's uh, kind of motivated me again to kind of get on this this keto diet um, <laughs> and choose my fats uh, a little better <laughs> <laughs> and not eat the whole pig. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a market care. We are one of the largest medical groups in Orange County. Um, we have great hospitals, Saddleback Hospital in Laguna Hills, Orange Coast Memorial and Long Beach Memorial. Um, you know, once you're part of our network, you can see any primary care physician. We have urgent cares, uh, all in-house, where uh, we offer uh, x-rays and labs. And uh, the best thing of it is that you get me with it. So any questions, concerns, any any issues, pretty much, you can always contact me directly. 
Um, and again, thank you so much, Dr. Trent. I really appreciate everything that you do. All right. We'll see you next week, Jose, and we'll chat again. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Dr. Trent. Okay. Take care. All right. Let me Bye, everyone. This. Thank you. Bye-bye.